Hello, my name is Carl Erickson and uh, in February I'll be presenting a course for the Natural History Society of Northumberland. The course is entitled An Introduction to Fossils and I'll be paying particular reference to the fossils that are found in the This is just a little short taster to see if you would know, be interested in taking part in the course. Being with, we'll discuss the subject of paleontology and uh, what a fossil actually is before going on to describe how fossils are formed, uh, the different methods there are, preservation of living organisms that are on Earth. Um, generally speaking, we tend to find fossils in sedimentary rocks. This uh, the little spotty area on here is um, called Stignaria, which is the remains of a, a root of a tree from the Carboniferous. And, uh, sedimentary rocks are very good for preserving um, organisms, uh, good for preservation anyway. Um, but they're not exclusively found, fossils aren't exclusively found in sedimentary rocks. We also can find them in metamorphic rocks. This is a trial of from Wales and uh, the picture hasn't been taken at a funny angle. The uh, fossil is actually in slate. And the slate is a low grade metamorphic rock. So the slate in its formation has distorted the sediments and the trial of has been distorted in that process. And also, uh, you may recognize um, columns in the rock in this cliff face here. These are basalt columns and it's an igneous rock. Uh, but just alongside it, there's a, a vertical structure here and a little filled in area at the bottom. This is actually a fossil tree in some igneous rocks on Mull, and it's called Macaulay's tree. And just to prove it's a tree, we'll just close in on the base of that structure. And you can see the grain in the wood of the tree quite clearly here. So uh, we're looking at a fossil and an igneous rock. So although the vast majority are in sedimentary rocks, they are found in other places. So we'll discuss that as well in the course. The intention is to start off with the beginning of the earth, formation of the earth, and work through the various different uh, uh, epochs, eons, and periods. So we're starting off in the Hedean. Uh, Earth is largely molten, a lot of volcanism going on, so there are real signs of life. But we work through the early signs of life, through the Archaean into the Proterozoic, where we've got very simple organisms, single celled organisms. Uh, eventually, in the Proterozoic, we get eukaryotes, which are the cell nucleus, so a little bit more complicated, uh, and then multicellular organisms form. So we work our way through all those time periods up to the present day. And within the geological history, uh, there's been a general increase in the number of families of organisms. The vast majority of fossils we find are marine invertebrates, something like 95% of all fossils are marine invertebrates. So this chart shows you um, the number of families of marine invertebrates that have thought to have existed over time. And you can see it's gradually increased to the highest levels at the present day. But you'll notice there are several sharp dips in the profile of this chart. Um, black lines have been marked up on some of those. Those black lines mark the five mass extinction events and the organisms which tended to suffer the most in those events are, are indicated there. So as we go through, we'll discuss all these mass extinction events and the smaller ones but still major extinctions but not quite as dramatic uh, and the effect that it had on the organisms uh, and also why the uh, presence of certain organisms actually defines the uh, or fossils of organisms defines these individual time and geological periods. We'll also then look at how we uh, classify life uh, on the planet hierarchy and taxonomy of these things. To start off with, we've got very simple organisms, the bacteria and the archaea, and the eukarya, which includes the animals and the plants, which is you know, most of the course will be directed at. But, uh, it's important that we know, you know the different levels in the hierarchy to, to highlight what, what's been happening with the evolution of life in the planet. Okay. 
And for certain organisms, we'll go into more detail just so we know at what sort of level in the hierarchy of, of life that we're talking about. And I'll use this system of slides to, to illustrate that for various different species that we'll come across um, later on in the course. And there's an example of that. Uh, I've got one here. Uh, I'll start off with eukaryotes. That's these cells with a um, nucleus in them. Animal kingdom, cnidaria, these are organisms which kill the prey by stinging basically and as we work our way down eventually we come down to Dibinophilum bipartitum the genus and species Dibinophilum bipartitum is the coral that we find in the frostily marble and carbon that's just an example of what sort of information we're in comes uh, and again we're going back and working through the history of the plant and the particular major events single cell life appearing, photosynthesis, putting oxygen into the sea, oceans and into the atmosphere, multicellular life. Uh, we we'll work through all these different episodes in the geological history and what effect it had on life and how that's pictured um, or displayed within the geological record. Mm. Geology. Structures such as these, the banded ironstone formations, no organisms in here, but the iron uh, is precipitated as a result of oxygen being dissolved in the seawater and the oxygen produced by photosynthesizing organisms. So here we've got evidence of like, early life. And then we move on to slightly more complex things where we've got stromatolites, uh, these are from Greenland. And structures found in really ancient rocks, some of the earliest signs we've got for life on the planet. We'll go through a variety of those. Uh, and back to Australia again, here's more stromatolites, from, uh, very familiar structures. You can see the structure of these things, and you can be reasonably convinced that these are some form by some form of living organisms. Nearly three and a half billion years old. Uh, but went through quite a boring period of not much change for a while. Um, and then 1.6 billion years ago, we uh, actually managed to get some evidence of multicellular life. You can see in this picture here, cell walls in a uh, microbial light found in stromatolites in, in India. Um, so this is the first evidence we've got of multicellular life, so uh, 1.6 billion years ago. But we still need to have all sorts of specialized equipment to detect these sort of things. And it's not until we get to sort of a later sort of pre-Cambrian or when uh, we get something that we can sort of instantly recognize that looks as though it was a living organism. This is a depiction of what the Ediacaran fauna might have been, which uh, is named after a place in, in South Australia, Ediacara. But um, these organisms were found throughout the world. Um, and they are soft bodied, so they require remarkable preservation um, in order to leave some remains. And here's some pictures and examples of those Ediacaran fossils. And you can see quite clearly nothing normal geological process wise would produce these levels. Uh, so that's uh, in the late pre Cambrian for the Ediacaran, which we were talking about. Um, but strangely enough, when you come to the Cambrian, the next stage on, uh, we find pretty much no evidence of any of those Ediacaran fauna. Instead, we have uh, lots of hard body, uh, well, organisms with hard body parts, uh, well preserved. This is the Burgess shales, which is world famous for the vast array of uh, uh, species that have been found there. Um, and we'll discuss those, but uh, there's no signs of Ediacaran fauna there. So, Something happened to those soft body Ediacaran organisms uh, before the Cambrian explosion when we got this big radiation in these species. So we'll go through that. Now, fortunately, none of those rocks are found in our area in the country. Um, but after that, we come into the Ordovician, and we do have Ordovician rocks in our area. Very small amount. This is a geological map of northern England. I'll be concentrating mainly on northeast England. Uh, but the oldest rocks we have in northeast England are some poor division rocks in Upper Teesdale, not even big enough to show up on this, this map here. Uh, but uh, this is where we're looking at the, the, the pink area 
is the wind sill and this little gray area is this little bunch of old division rocks there's more on the other side of the pennines here but just a little bit in our area there and these are some of these old division trails in the tea state uh, and within those they found uh, some fossils of shrimp-like organisms the fossils of graptolites and these little things here these are very microscopic 50 to 100 microns across perhaps and these are called acritarchs uh, and those have been identified then these are very very important you'll never see them in the field you need specialized equipment and techniques to, to extract these but they are very important in actually dating the rocks these rocks were thought to be silurian until uh, all the vision date was coming through uh, these acritarchs Okay, now at the opposite end of the country, right up on the borders, in the northwest of the Cheviots in part of our area, we have Silurian rocks. Here's some Silurian shales in the upper coquit, and this is in Coombs and Burn. Uh, again, dating these is through acritarch, but we'll also have identified species of graptolites in there as well. These are oceanic. Uh, uh, organisms in the Iapetus Ocean separated uh, Scotland from Northern England, uh, Ordovician and Silurian. So moving on back to the map again, Devonian. Well, there's some Devonian sedimentary rocks in Scotland, but we don't have any in Northern England uh, in our region anyway. The Devonian rocks we have here are Igneous and the Cheviot, so we don't really know any Devonian fossils. I will cover Devonian fossils you know, on a worldwide sort of basis, but if we ask to local examples, nothing really much there. But instead, we've got the Carboniferous, which is up in the Devonian, uh, and this bluey green and the yellow and the grey uh, are the Carboniferous rocks in our area. So, Carboniferous limestones, the Dimension and the Urian and the coal measures. So we'll spend a lot of time looking at those since it covers most of our area. And we've got excellent exposures of sedimentary rocks on the coastline. And this is the sea houses. And we've got a large area of exposed Eelwell limestone you know, just below the boulder clay and the cliffs here. And this is packed with fossils just in the shales above it. And so we'll see shells, uh, carbon for shells, and what you'll find trilobites up there. Uh, but we also have trace fossils. These are little burrows from marine organisms, leaving the marks behind in the sediments. So we have trace fossils as well. And it wouldn't be the Carboniferous without trees. And here we have the stump of a tree, which looks very much like a present-day tree. But this is part of some of the best preserved, if not the best preserved, uh, tree stumps in uh, fossilized tree stumps in Britain for this particular time period. And this is up near Gilson, so we've got some excellent stuff there. So we'll go through the Carboniferous as well. Further down the coast, uh, from South Shields down to Hartlepool, we have the Permian rocks, largely magnesium limestones, uh, formed in the, uh, the Zechstein Sea, you must have seen it. it was inside the large continent of Pangaea. And in there, uh, again, have excellent localities. This is Black Hole Rocks, where we have preserved, well preserved stromatolites, which you can see in the picture below. Oops, I'm going to do that again. Stromatolites in the, in the lower picture here, and these are Black Hole Rocks. So that's again related to what we've seen in the earliest forms of life. And we also get uh, reef fossils. There was a big reef that uh, on the western margin of the Zechstein Sea which is now preserved in places like Tunstall Hills. But it wasn't a coral reef like we saw in the Carboniferous or we see nowadays. It was largely made up of these structures, which are bryozoans, so we'll talk about those. Uh, and we can't miss out the permian without uh, this picture down here, which is uh, a fossil that was found in, in the quarries at Hetanley Hole. And it's actually the remains of a gliding reptile. And this is the only one of its kind that have been found in Britain, so we have a spectacular. Um, and moving on, we'll skip over most of the rest again. I'll discuss them in the context of the world. But in our region, these are the Triassic rocks from about Middlesbrough and the Vale of Cleveland because they're largely unexposed. There's a little bit on the beach at Seton Crew, but they're largely unexposed and we don't have much more fossils from those either. And on the very extreme edge of this, we've got the, the grey stuff, which is the Jurassic. Um, so the Jurassic starts at uh, 
uh, red carpeting, which goes down as far as Scarborough. So we'll, we'll discuss the Jurassic as well. And we have some good localities as well. Here we've got uh, Brunswick Bay, uh, but, uh, plenty of good fossils down there. Um, top right here we'll have a dinosaur footprint from Whitby. Uh, and then further down at Scalby, we've got Scalby plant beds and these are uh, remains of the ginkgo plant. But you don't have to go that far, so the earliest Jurassic is at Redcar and this is an ammonite on the beach at Redcar. Really big ammonite, wonderful stuff in Redcar. But we'll discuss the emergence of these organisms and the extinction of them uh, throughout the course. Uh, as we introduce new species going through the course, we'll also go through a little bit of an anatomy and description of what we're actually seeing, what the parts are called, so that uh, these can be used in uh, helping identify, well, to a species level, but also certainly so identify what um, sort of animal we're looking at. So the top left here, we've got graptolites, and then the bottom right, we've got dynamites here. So some of these terms when we're actually talking about what we found, for instance, uh, when you find a bellamite fossil, it's an area always the guard of the bellamite. We don't always be found much in the other parts. So, yeah, just for that. Um, and although we don't have any of the uh, remaining rocks from the Cretaceous uh, through to the present day in our region, uh, I shall still cover them in the course just for, for completeness. And that will bring us round to, to uh, 12 o'clock on the clock of geological time. So hopefully that will give you uh, an inkling into what the course is intended to cover in the five weeks. Uh, and there'll be an opportunity within there for people to discuss uh, their own fossils if they have any and ask questions. So I hope you found that uh, of interest and I look forward to seeing many of you on the course itself. Okay, goodbye.